Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 6th of February, and it's the feast day of St. Paul Mickey and his companions, martyrs in Japan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> o God, strength of all the saints, who through the cross was, were pleased to call the martyrs St. Paul Mickey and companions to life, grant, we pray, that by their intercession we may hold with courage even until death to the faith that we profess. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and there continue to be the readings of the Feria. And today is an important day for, the, for us for the last two weeks. It's the last day of reading the letter to the Hebrews. So chapter 13, 15 to 21. Through Christ, let us offer God an unending sacrifice of praise, a verbal sacrifice that is offered every time we acknowledge his name. Keep doing good works and sharing your resources, for these are sacrifices that please God. Obey your leaders and do all they tell you, because they must give an account of the way they look after your souls. Make this a joy for them to do, and not a grief. You yourselves would be the losers. I pray that the God of peace, who brought our Lord Jesus back from the dead, to become the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood that sealed an eternal covenant, may make you ready to do his will in any kind of good action, and turn us all into whatever is acceptable to himself, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> and the gospel continues in Mark, <clears throat> still in chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. The apostles rejoined Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Then he said to them, You must come away to some lonely place all by yourselves and rest for a while. For there were so many coming and going that the apostles had no time even to eat. So they went off in a boat to a lonely place where they could be by themselves. But people saw them going, and many could guess where, and from every town they all hurried to the place on foot and reached it before them. <clears throat> so when he stepped to saw, he saw a huge large crowd, and he took pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he set himself to teach them at some length. The Gospel of the Lord. The conclusion to the letter of the Hebrews is partly to reassure those who until then regarded the sacrifices they have made as essential to their relationship with the God who had saved them, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses. And the author is saying that the new sacrifice that ordinary people can make is the sacrifice of praise and good works rather than the sacrifice of killing animals and doing without. They had been trained and grown up in a system whereby if you were wanted to make an offering to God to do something that put you right with God, you did it by using some of your resources to buy an animal, then that animal was killed for the sake of God. Jesus, in his death and resurrection, has swept away the old covenant and the old way of sacrifice. And the new way of sacrifice is praise to God and good works. And that's what this letter to the Hebrews ends with. We praise God. Our sacrifice to God is our praise and good works. And he goes on to give a particular example of good works, and that is being biddable, being obedient to those who are appointed as our shepherds. He says, don't give them grief, rather obey them. Obedience is something we find very challenging in today's world. We feel it's a democratic process, and we've all got our own voice, and we've all got our own rights to say whatever we think. But equally, the call both in Hebrews and in today's church, is to follow 
with obedience the teaching of the successors to the apostles, <coughs> the Pope, the bishops, the priests. Though, of course, in matters to do with faith and morals, we're not talking about um, what's the best business plan or anything. Though, of course, that could be affected by what is taught. The heart of it is that Jesus has given authority to his apostles and their successors to teach and to say what is the approach to take as Christians in today's world. We need to continue to listen with humility and with goodwill. We hear in the Gospel Jesus is precisely saying that when the crowd crowded round because they were so keen to hear what he said, he could see they were like a sheep without a shepherd and he felt gutted for them, is the exact translation, that he really felt he wanted to help them. And there's a very real sense that even in today's world, especially in the midst and towards the end of the pandemic, who is going to show us what is right, how to go life forward for his deeper values? And again, we turn to Christ and the teaching of the Church. We also hear the Lord's phrase there, you've been very busy, because the, he sent the disciples off to do their ministry two by two. Then we had the story of John the Baptist and now they've come back again. And Jesus said there must be a review and reflection. And all of us need time both for action and reflection. Um, <clears throat> perhaps during the pandemic we've had more time for reflection than we wanted, but Jesus is saying both are important. And of course the feast day today is that of Paul Mickey and his companions um, Paul Mickey was a Jesuit in the 17th century, uh, 1606 to 1660, um, and he was preaching the gospel with with his companions. In he was Japanese in Japan, but the Japanese authority turned on the Christians, said we're not going to have this anymore, and they were put up on the cross and speared to death. Again, we've had been had a week of listening to this different martyrdoms. There was a St. Agatha yesterday. And most of us will never have to face uh, a death, a death-challenging situation for our faith. But all of us need to be fervent and to be true to our faith and when it is challenged to be able to quite publicly hold to it in the face of challenge. We turn to our bidding prayers. <coughs> the response to bidding prayers is, Father, send us your spirit. God's gift was not a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. With complete confidence we pray, Father, send us your spirit. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ you have given us every spiritual blessing. Father, send us your spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary taught Christ, Mary brought Christ into the world. Through the Church, may Christ be born again today in the hearts of men and women. Father, send us your Spirit. Father, may your Spirit lead us forward out of solitude. May he lead us to open the eyes of the blind, to proclaim the word of light, to reap together the harvest of life. Father, send us your Spirit. Let our striving for your kingdom not fall short through selfishness or fear. May the universe be alive with the Spirit, and our homes be the pledge of a world redeemed. Father, send us your Spirit. And we pray to the Father in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord God, source of strength to all the saints, you called your martyrs Paul and his companions to undergo the cross that they might enter into life. Let their prayer help us to keep the faith to the end of our days. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost.
Have a good day. All the best.